Fourth Sunday of Advent, Revelation and Joy. The scripture is from Luke 2, verses 10 to 14. Do not be afraid. I bring you great news that will bring great joy for all people. Today in the town of David, a Savior has been born to you. He is the Messiah, the Lord. This will be a sign to you. You will find a baby wrapped in clothes and lying in a manger. Suddenly, a great company of the heavenly host appeared with the angel, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest and on earth. Peace to those on whom his favor rests. Today we relight the candles of hopeful expectation, recalling God's promise. The candle of peaceful preparation, remembering the voice crying in the wilderness, urging the people to prepare the way of the coming Lord and the candle of loving proclamation, reminding us of the love found in and through him. Now we light the candle of revelation and joy. We celebrate with great joy the announcement of the coming king and the greatness of God's love revealed through the Christ child. Let's pray. Father, we thank you for revealing yourself through Jesus, and we praise you for the greatness of your love. Help us to share the joy of knowing you with others, and live our lives more like Christ every day. In his name we pray. Amen. Mary, did you know that your baby boy would one day walk on water? Mary, did you know that your baby boy would save us sons and daughters? Did you know that your come to make you new this child that you deliver will soon deliver you mary did you know that your baby boy would 
God gives sight to a blind man. Mary, did you know that your baby boy would calm a storm with his hands? Did you know that your baby boy has walked where angels trod? When you kiss your little baby, you kiss the face of God. The blind will see, the deaf will hear, the dead will live again. The lame will leap, the dumb will speak, the praise is of the Lord. Mary, did you know that your baby boy is Lord of all creation? Mary, did you know that your baby boy will one day rule the nations? Did you know that your baby boy is heaven's perfect lamb? That sleeping child you're holding is the grave. I wish you could uh, see my sweatshirt this morning. It's got the 12 gifts of Christmas on it. Now what do you expect to find under your Christmas tree this year? That's right, young disciples, you expect to get a gift. And that's what I want to talk about this morning, the gift of good news. In the 60th chapter of Isaiah, verse 6, it tells us, They will bring gold and frankincense and will bear good news of the praises of the Lord. The night Jesus was born, the gift of good news was brought to the shepherds in the fields by the angels and a star. And that good news that they told the shepherds was that Jesus would be born tonight. There was also three wise men that brought gifts to the, the baby Jesus, and I brought them with me this morning to show you the three gifts. The first gift is the gift of gold. Now this was worth a lot and given only to the kings. You have the gift of frankincense which was used in worship for those that it caused it had such a sweet aroma to it that they would use it during worship. And last they brought the gift of myrrh and this myrrh was good to present and make the body ready, ready for the grave. Now, we don't have these kind of gifts today, but we can give gifts to others. And that gift would be the good news of Jesus Christ, his birth. Now, the gift that you get under the tree is not the greatest gift that you could ever get. But the gift of the good news is the best gift that we can get and that we can give others. And this good news is that Jesus give his life for us, for the forgiveness of our sins, and for the hope of eternal life. Now, Skylar, I did bring you a gift this morning. And I want to tell you that if you want it, you've got to stop down at the house. God bless all and have a great week. Greetings. Here we are for another online only uh, message with the uh, shutdown. 
I think uh, Cambria County is now made number one county in the country for the highest percentile of deaths and cases of COVID, which go figure how that happened. But anyway, the hospitals are filled. So again, we're uh, not going to be doing uh, inside uh, services, but God is using this, I believe, to remind us of how God works in different ways. I mean, how we can connect and still be with God even in strange times. And certainly strange times is a big theme of uh, the Bible. And certainly the birth of Christ is one of the strangest times we can imagine right up there with the resurrection and uh, his glorification in heaven, his ascension. So anyway, um, let's uh, jump in to uh, another message here. And again, I have as a slide here, uh, Mary behind me, this represents Mary, as she has heard from the angel uh, announcing to her how Jesus would be born. Uh, again, it's, it, it's, it's uh, who would have saw that coming? Uh, Mary's baffled, uh, she is uh, struggling, and so are we. I think again, when we understand scripture right, we become the people that are going through this. And Mary's example of faith and how she dealt with strange times and God's way of working, which, like she asked, uh, how can this be? How can this happen? You know, and again, uh, we're asking those questions through life uh, naturally and in many ways. And here uh, God is teaching us and answering those questions in the greatest good news way of all, that all this is happening for real and the reason why it's happening, again, is, is that Jesus Christ is uh, going to work something that we could not work for ourselves, our own salvation and the transformation of all that exists into a new heaven and new earth. And he is preparing us, making that possible through his work uh, coming to earth and personally delivering that message and that story. So let's go to the scripture and uh, listen closely to Luke as it records this. Luke does a very detailed job of the story of, of Mary here. So uh, let's listen to these scriptures. In the sixth month of Elizabeth's pregnancy, God sent the angel Gabriel to Nazareth, a village in Galilee, to a virgin named Mary. She was engaged to be married to a man named Joseph, a descendant of the king of David. Gabriel appeared to her and said, Greetings, favored woman. The Lord is with you. Confused and disturbed, Mary tried to think what the angel could mean. Don't be afraid, Mary, the angel told her. You have found favor with God. You will conceive and give birth to a son, and you will name him Jesus. He will be very great and will be called the Son of the Most High. The Lord God gave him the throne of his ancestor David, and he will reign over Israel forever. His kingdom will never end. Mary asked the angel, but how can this happen? I am a virgin. The angel replied, The Holy Spirit will come upon you, and the power of the Most High will overshadow you, so the baby to be born will be holy. He will be called the Son of God. What's more, your relative Elizabeth has become pregnant in her old age. People used to say she was barren, but she has conceived a son and is now in her sixth month. For the word of the Lord will never fail. Mary responded, I am the Lord's servant. May everything you have said about me come true. And then the angel left her. Wow, that uh, really gets to the heart of how God operates in this world and in our lives. Uh, how he comes in ways that no one would have saw that coming. <laughs> I don't think Mary saw it. And, and, and certainly with little context, little, you know, we know the story. We, you know, we're kind of prepared somewhat by it. But this is out of the blue. 
And you got to understand, for a young Jewish girl, she's probably 15 years old, around that age anyway. And, you know, to be talking about God being conceived in a woman, the Son of God being presented that way, and that it is holy, that it's, it's different, it's separated uh, from humanity in some way uh, because of the sinfulness of man. And, and it is God himself that is providing this seed, this child, this uh, son to be born. Uh, I mean, come on, that is that is from the other side of the dark side of 20 moons away. I mean, that is really uh, a challenge. And and again, she, she struggles, she's disturbed, I, you know, wouldn't we all? Now, why why is this so important for us? Because the whole story of Jesus and the whole story of life and existence and what we're about and what we're doing with God involves this kind of being disturbed and shook up and, and wondering how in the world God can do this. How can this be? And and certainly many people answer that quickly and say, well, because it isn't. It's just too ridiculous. Or like a, a good Buddhist would say, you you Christians are, are just too... Uh, too uh, positive thinking. This is just too good to be true. Um, you know, other people say it's just ridiculous. It's just man's imagination. It's anthropology. It's just the human spirit uh, projecting God and, and making this stuff up and all this kind of thing. And, and certainly there is a lot of examples of that very same thing in uh, human history and experience. No wonder, in a way, you know, so many people dismiss it so quickly because it's out there. And, and just because there's, quote, false gods doesn't mean there isn't a real God. And that's sort of my message here. Just because um, there's so many phonies out there and so many uh, ripoffs uh, and so much fake news and so much distortion, it doesn't mean that there isn't a baby in that bathwater. And this is definitely the baby, the baby Jesus, okay? Uh, and and we got to rescue it from the bathwater of how the world looks at this. And Mary did that. She rescued her struggling, her doubt, her fears. How did she do that? By believing God's word, by believing that this was God, that God was speaking and trusting his words that will not fail. Now, there you go. That's a life lesson, guys. If you ever want to find your way uh, up in an upside down world, uh, you, you really got, you got to believe those words. You, you, you just got to press into that and you can't, you can't quit. OK. And, um, you know, it, it, it's 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 a struggle to deal with the way God works things um, for Mary. It was. Uh, and here it is, the most wonderful news, probably the most significant thing going on. And God didn't make it easy. <laughs> if anything, it continued to be an example of how how God works. And again, that's why Mary is such a hero of faith. And for that, she should be venerated. She should be uh, uh, acclaimed and uh, lifted up as an example. But again, here in Mary's story, it's never about her being divine. It's all about God making it holy because he's the one overshadowing. He's the one that makes it happen. That's how it happens. Not by her, not by her virtue per se or anything else. It's it's a, it's a wonderful act of God's grace and this wonderful, faithful, humble, and yet brave young lady embraced it. And I want you to embrace the struggles and the perplexities and, and the disturbances that uh, God puts in your life, trusting by his word, by what he promises, that it will work to good and all of it. And even the worst of it, a matter of fact, uh, that's usually when God shows off the most is when things look the darkest and when it means it seems the craziest. When it comes down to trusting him, that radical, uh, sincere, childlike trust, which Mary's demonstrating for us here, is exactly what God's after in this season and every day and every moment with him. That's how we know God. And here it is. Mary was able to encounter God and experience God's work in a powerful, miraculous way because she had that faith, that childlike faith. 
you can have that too. And God wants to have that with you. That's why he sent Mary and everyone else ahead of us and certainly sent Jesus in at the right time so that we too could experience that kind of relationship with him. Now, let me let me tell you a story about, you know, someone that, uh, you know, kind of struggles with how things work. But anyway, this is one of my favorite stories for Christmas. Anyway, it goes like this. There's these two fellas up in uh, the Cape May area, and uh, they were right on the coast where they lived, and and they uh, and it was Christmas time. And these two guys were good friends, and they were hoping to get out of going shopping with their wives. They just were trying to have every excuse and, and everything. And, and finally, you know, the one guy saw a chance, and he says, well, I'll tell you what. Uh, me and my friend, we we want to we want to go uh, sailing on the bay, uh, and then the wife says, "Okay, okay." So this friend uh, got out of it because you know he told his wife and the other wife told them, and so it was okay. So they got to go sailing, you know, and here here they are out on the bay, and they're just as happy as, as can be because they're out there in the wind and just sailing away, and it's just just wonderful and everything. And when you know it. A gale came up. Uh, a storm just hit him so hard and so sudden. The wind started rocking the boat really bad, and and waves started splashing over, and 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 soon a gust overturned their their little sailboat in the bay there. And so here they are, and you know it's Christmas time. It's December, pretty cold water. They're all wet and they're in the water, struggling to make it, you know. And so. They realize, okay, we're not too far from the, the shore, so we'll, we'll try to swim in. So they had their life vests on, and so they, they were able to swim in, even with a great deal of a struggle. And they finally got to the place where their feet could meet ground, and, and man, you know, they were tired. I mean, they were tired after that, and you know, in the cold and everything else. But when you know at the bottom they hit was really muddy. It just so happened to hit an edge of the shore that was just, it just happened to have a lot of mud, you know. And so they started trudging their way in to shore. And it was still, you know, a good couple football fields before they could get to the shore. And so they're trudging in this mud. And they're just, oh, they're tired. They're, you know, the mud's sucking them down. And, and, you know, they're pushing against it. And they're struggling. And, 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 and finally, you know, after, you know, an hour or more of this, they finally make it to shore. And they get themselves, they drag themselves up on the land. And they lay down, and uh, they're just catching their breath. They're exhausted. And the one guy gets a big smile on his face, and he looks over at his buddy, and he says, Boy, sure better than shopping, isn't it? And the other guy smiled, yeah. <laughs> well, I'll tell you what. you got to think about it. As hard as it was for Mary and Elizabeth and just all those with this miraculous story about how it worked out, you know, here's Elizabeth old and having a baby and, you know, it's a joy and everything. But, man, what a crazy way to work out life, you know. It's certainly not normal and it's certainly not easy, okay. It's challenging at every point and yet it's wonderful. Why is it wonderful? If it wasn't for the fact that these two ladies, Elizabeth and Mary both, really believed and trusted God, it would be a terror, wouldn't it? Think about it. I mean, you know, this is this could be a horror story, I mean, for, for Mary. I mean, you know, just what's going on with me, you know? And and, and, and and with Elizabeth, as old as she is, you know, is she going to be able to handle this? Is she going to be okay? You know, is the baby going to be okay? And and the same thing with Mary. Is, is the baby going to be okay? And, and how about my fiancé? What is he going to think of all this, you know? And yet... She's able to say, may it be as you say, you know, I am your servant. Isn't that cool? Now, are you ready to say that to God in your life? Are you ready to accept the things that are disturbing and perplexing, the things that struggle, the things that are hard and long? You wonder how you're going to make it? Just like those guys were going to make it to shore. I mean, they wondered how they're going to make it. But yet, it's better. It is so much better because it has meaning. It has purpose. It has real salvation. It is not a transitory thing that's going to come and go. This baby is going to rule, not for a season, 
not just for Israel, but the whole kingdom of God forever, forever. And if we're like Mary and Elizabeth and we're believing right now, do you believe that Jesus is reigning, that he is ruling over all of mankind and and human destiny and, and eternity? Well, if God keeps his word, if his word is real, if the Bible is his word, which I believe all those things, I should and you should truly believe he's reigning and all is well. And that despite the struggle, the perplexity, and, you know, how can that be? <laughs> you know, I mean, you wonder, how could be? How could it be that God's reigning right now? I mean, with all the craziness going on, how can it be? That God is working this way. Well, it is because of his power. Because of what God can do. We keep thinking in man's terms, the world's point of view. Certainly it is impossible for man to be saved through human effort. Through man's uh, limitations and resources. Um, you know, it would you know, it'd be impossible for Mary to conceive without a man. It'd be impossible for Elizabeth, as old as she is, to conceive, even with a man. So how can this be? How can this happen? Because God, God himself, has decided to do this. God himself has decided to come and become one of us and be with us and fulfill all the things and work all the things that man couldn't do for himself. Adam and Eve couldn't do it right. Uh, the nation of Israel couldn't do it right. All humanity couldn't do it right. The only way God could make it right, the only way he could restore a fellowship where God walked with man, where they would be in eternity, where man would be uh, in charge and reigning over all that God made, the only way that could be done is through God coming in this mysterious way. Because God alone knows the math, the logic, what is necessary to cause the human uh, species, to cause humanity to become what God intended from the beginning. And that is an intimate companion and part of the family of God, his own precious children, as part of God himself. In this way, we become partakers in the divine nature, as Second Peter talks about in the first chapter, where we have this amazing gift of being set free from the sinful nature and through sinful desires by this miraculous move of God. And we are granted and given uh, the nature that we participate in the very nature of God. And it, that's just amazing. But how can it be? How, you know, how can this happen? Well, God has his ways. <laughs> And they're not our ways, and they're not certainly not the world's ways. And and we need to just trust that. That God's thoughts, God's logic, God's math, God's understanding is above ours. Now, is that too hard to believe that the uh creation doesn't, you know, know as much as the creator? The one who holds all of existence together, and heck, we have trouble tying our shoes sometimes, <laughs> you know? I mean, here it is. We have such a, an experience through Mary of how God can make something happen that we could never make happen. That's beyond humanity. But God does it. Not for anything but the love of us. Now that's kind of staggering when we start to step back and look at that. That God loved humanity so much that he put all humanity and all existence and all his time and effort and who he is into it so that we could be partnered with him forever, that we would become like him, that we would participate in his divine nature. And here it is. We see God doing something miraculous where he's being born into human flesh. Well, in the same way, he's going to, we're going to be born into a new existence, a new uh, reality. And that's going to be because 
of Jesus and his reigning over all that is because it is his will and purpose to make us one with the Father, to make us participants in his divine nature, to make us his children and to be his brother and sister and to, and to be in God forever. And again, I stress this forever. And again, the stress in the scripture is God, God's word won't fail. I mean, that's, that's the anchor we have in things that disturb us, that trouble us, the struggles that we have, the wondering how in the world it's going to work. God's word won't fail. It won't fail you. It won't fail me. And we are going to experience the joy of something so much better than what we could ever imagine. It's even what uh, Paul says, you know, that the glory that God uh, envisions for us is, is beyond what we can even imagine. And so it is, too, that God uses the same kind of power in becoming flesh among us, in becoming Jesus, who is the heart of God. When we see Jesus, we see the Father. When we see Jesus, we see God. So again, here it is through the faithfulness of these precious ones, these human ones, just like us. Mary and Elizabeth, we see the story of God's redemption, saving you and me, unfold. How can it be? Because God made it so and said it would be so. Amen. God bless and Merry Christmas.